Hello, my name is Stephen and I'm the man with the hat and today I'm in my, my studio um, talking to you about photographing your coins and artifacts. Now for those of you who are not a metal detectorist like myself and my main viewers, lots of people want to photograph things at close quarters um, and show them to their best effect. I'm going to be using a zoomorphic buckle which is 1250 to 1400 AD so that's between 6 and uh, 750 years old um, purely because it's got a lot of fine detail and I would like people to obviously to see that fine detail. My first attempt looked like this. My second attempt was a little bit better like this and my third attempt was like this. It's not perfect and photographers are probably going to tear me to pieces but it is not about being a good or professional photographer and it's about doing a reasonable job without using things like Photoshop and all the rest of that stuff. This is something that anyone can do with an ordinary point and shoot camera with a manual setting. I've been trying for a year to get some decent photographs and the only way I could really do it because of the white balance on a paper was put it in the palm of my hand. I always got better photographs of an object in my hand. But that's not acceptable if you're going to submit it to an official database, for example, with the Portable Antiquity Scheme. So if you've got anything at all that you would like to photograph um, for reference, for detail, then hopefully these tips are going to show you how to do it. First things first, when photographing anything small that you want to get a, um, a really sharp image and detailed image is, always use a tripod. Tip number two, wherever you can, use natural daylight. Get some really good natural light outside. I'm going to show you now what I do, and this applies to both inside and on the studio. So here we go. First thing to do, it needs to set up before we take the photograph. So first of all we really need a table, um, a tripod and some white paper or card and already you can see the white paper we don't want crumpled paper like that we need fresh clean smooth paper and it needs to be pure white you can see those two do have a significant difference to them it needs to be white that's got a warmer yellowy tinge to it. The next thing we need to do is to make sure that the tripod it's just above the edge of the table so you can attach the camera on here and shoot down using a macro setting onto the white paper. And just turn it over like this, get the distance right. Turn it on to manual and just see what you've got. The manual setting on most cameras will give you access to a white balance and there it says white balance and if you scroll across to set the white balance it's a one push set so you just push the middle button and you'll see what happens now if we put that buckle on white paper and drop that down to get that into a nice shot. That's a pretty good picture except there's a lot of shadow on there. That shadow around the buckle isn't really acceptable. The need for this, just get the camera out of the way, is a nice clean piece of glass. And then all you do is to make sure you centre the object by moving the glass. You go to menu, set white balance. There are no shadows on that object whatsoever. You can see no, that buckle has got no shadows. I know that paper doesn't look white because I'm photographing it through the camera and through the video, but it is, it's a good white background. And then all we do is take the picture.
But other than that, you've got everything else. You just need to have that white piece of paper with um, a piece of glass lifted between one and two inches above the paper and the object you're photographing on the glass. Um, so really, that's as easy as that. It makes so much difference. And this is the actual picture that we took. So if you like that tip, please leave a thumbs up. Share it, please, for others to see on how to photograph their objects and coins and artefacts. And don't forget, if you're not subscribed, please do. I've got some British medieval silver coins I'm giving away every month. And it's a subscriber competition only where a name is drawn at random. So if you're subscribed, you could well be chosen too. And also it's now coming to the season for my metal detectorist friends where I'm inviting a lot more people to come digging with me um, for a day out. And if you want to be chosen, then you need to be a subscriber for that. So I'll catch you all soon and thanks for joining me.